Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Friday, March the 10th. U.S. stocks are higher today after a stellar jobs report underscored the strength of the economy, potentially giving the Federal Reserve enough ammunition to raise rates this coming week. Data showed 235,000 jobs were added in the public and private sectors in February, blowing past economists' average estimate of 190,000. The unemployment rate edged down to 4.7%, while average earnings rose 0.2% in February. The odds of a rate hike at the Fed's meeting next week rose to 92% after the report, according to Thomson Reuters. The announcement will take place this coming Wednesday, March 15th, about 2 p.m. Eastern Time. As well, Fed Chair Janet Yellen's press conference following the announcement will be closely watched for clues on the pace of future rate hikes. And with that bit of news, now let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, we're going to look at our usual chart, our daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. This is the ETF that closely follows our S&P 500 index. We like to use this because indexes themselves are not traded. So the SPY can give us, uh, we can see volume on it as you see in this uh, lower scale where my cursor is, we can see volume, which is kind of important many times. At any rate, as we look at the SPY today, uh, where I captured it, we see it's trading at $237.76. You see this little gap up this morning that it had following the, um, the jobs numbers. So the market gapped up this morning, we say. Uh, and this 237.76 is about 23.77 on the S&P 500 itself. Of course, we had the new all-time high uh, this past March 1st at $240.32. Uh, yesterday's low down here, you see yesterday's low was this doji candlestick sitting right atop the 20-day moving average. It used the 20-day moving average there for support. We also had price support, and that low came in at $235.74. And we noted last week that we had support, potential support, down here at 235 At this point now, the 50-day moving average, the green line here, the simple 50-day moving average is coming in at about 231. Uh, and, and of course, the 200-day moving average is way down here, just under 220. Now that gives me uh, a little bit of angst right here because if we look at where price is now on the S&P 500 and we look down to the 200-day moving average, uh, we, can, we can calculate that the SPY is trading at about an 8% premium to the 200-day moving average. And when we get to a 10% premium, which it had earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago in March, uh, honestly, 10% is when the back of my neck starts to itch. That's just, that's just, that's too good to be true. We have to remember that moving averages kind of act like magnets to price. It doesn't mean that if price gets too high above them, it goes back down to a lower moving average. It does mean it's a little overblown. And, and uh, so I, I do want to take note here that the SPY is trading at this premium to its, its big lumbering 200-day moving average. So let's just see if it can stay up. Now, of course, the all-time test here is going to be can the SPY in coming weeks move back up here and move back over 240, up to 241, and continue this mighty uptrend that it's been in? And that, of course, is the million-dollar question. Um, with the unemployment numbers coming in so strong today and the market seemingly so happy about those numbers, 
Uh, if the Fed raises next week, one would have to think that the market could just see it as a non-event. Of course, this is just a guess, and our fickle market could just as easily change her mind and get cranky over a, a, a rate raise. We're going to have to wait for the actual Fed announcement to see what happens. But for right now, everything looks good. Our next chart here is one that is not quite so happy. This is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, simple IWM. This is the daily chart. Uh, the IWM, again, follows the Russell 2000 small cap index. Many times we will use the Russell 2000 small caps as a leading indicator for the broader market. As I've told you before, the Russell 2000 is capable of leading us from a bull market into a bear market or at least a, a uh, correction. It's also capable of leading us out from a bear market into a bull market. So we watch it at top potential, I should say, tops and bottoms to um, get kind of an indicator as to where the broader market could go. As you can see right now, the IWM, when I captured this chart this morning, it was trading at $135.60. The IWM had an all, made an all-time high here on March 1st of $140.36. Since then it has lagged. You can see how it's pulled back here. Since then it has lagged the SPY and the QQQ or the NASDAQ. It's, it's not been nearly as strong or enthusiastic as the other two indexes, and I'm keeping an eye on it. I said on Twitter two days ago that if, if the IWM experienced three consecutive closes below the 50-day moving average, which is the green line you're looking at, um, and, and in, if it cannot rise back above it, this IWM could start pressuring the broad markets lower. It's just the way things tend to go here. It doesn't mean you run out and sell all your stocks. It just means uh, the IWM is, is still bullish here, but it just means that I think we keep an eye on this. Um, we have, if the IWM can't move back up over its 50-day moving average, if it continues lower next week, our next key support zone here is at $133, where I've drawn this horizontal trend line. This is key support. Uh, should the IWM move lower and actually close below, slice through 133 and close below it, I will take that as another signal that it could pressure the broad markets lower. So a move down on the IWM uh, I think can be can be viewed as a slight negative toward the market. Of course, if it starts moving higher, back over its 50-day moving average and back up to 140, then uh, I will exhale at least a little bit. Okay, our next chart for the day is one that we haven't looked at in a while. This is the Pure Funds ISE Cybersecurity ETF. And... <clears throat> I'm keeping an eye on this particular ETF. Uh, the symbol is HACK, HACK. Uh, it has 35 holdings in it. Uh, the holdings include Trend Micro, Fortinet, Symantec, Checkpoint, and Cisco. Those are some of the top components. Uh, it made an all-time high, which you can't see on this chart, of 33.91 back in June of 2015. Now, as you can see, when I captured this chart, it's at $28.60. It managed to get back up to this high of 30 in February and has pulled back from there to its 50-day moving average. Now, if it can bounce up and off of this 50-day moving average, uh, if the market cooperates next week, uh, especially through the Fed announcement, <clears throat> then the HACK would look attractive to me. I would like to get it pretty close to this 50-day moving average if possible. As you can see down here, our 14-day RSI has moved below the uh, 50 midline and is now, <clears throat> excuse me, at the moment bouncing up. 
The MACD line, a slower moving indicator, has headed back down toward its zero line. But if the uh, HACK can bounce from here, then of course the MACD will go back up. So I'm looking at this potential support here of just about $28.50. And, uh, and the 50-day moving average is coming in here at $28.37. If it can bounce higher, I will be interested in it, see if it can potentially head back up to 30 If, however, it rolls down next week and below its 50-day moving average, then I will no longer be interested. If I'm in, I will get out. I only want HACK if it's above that 50-day moving average. Okay, now on to next week's economic reports. But first, please join us on Monday, March 13th for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low priced high value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those, if you cannot attend our live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available just a few minutes after the session ends to all of our members. For more information and to join, please go to tonysmarketclub.com and uh, check us out. I think you'll be glad you did. And now for the economic reports this coming week. We don't have much going on Monday. Tuesday, we have the PPI or Producer Price Index. Wednesday, we have the CPI or Consumer Price Index. The Empire Manufacturing Report, Retail Sales, our usual crude inventories. And of course, on Wednesday around 2 p.m., we have that all-important Fed uh, interest rate decision. Thursday, we have building permits and housing starts, the Philly Fed, our usual weekly jobless claims, and natural gas inventories. And on Friday, we have our Michigan Sentiment Report. Again, please join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading knowledge and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.